This is a basic overview of what to do for the pool maintenance. We'll start with the, the pump here, which is right next to the pool. The important thing when you're doing the pool maintenance, as you can see, there is a second trap basket. We'll get to the first one in a second. But this is the fail safe, the last one before the water goes into the pump. So you want to be checking this uh, periodically. Usually I don't have to clean this out from season to season, but sometimes there might be little bugs um, or the filter doesn't sit in there correctly where this does need to be cleaned out. Um, but otherwise it's usually just once a year when you take down the pool that that needs to be cleaned out. But you can see it uh, right here. Right next to that is a valve. Uh, it's in the open position when it's up. When you close it, And lock it then you can you can go and <clears throat> that stops uh, the inflow of water you'll still have the outflow of water connected here uh, I'll show you you can just put a rag uh, into there that'll stop the water from coming in it'll still drip in uh, when you have a rag but it will allow you to open this up uh, this uh, lid is extremely tight and hard to open and close just a, a heads up because it seals tight so uh, in opening and closing it uh, and when you are doing maintenance and it's in the summer when the when the water is up you will get a little wet so don't wear nice clothes so uh, we'll we'll put the valve back to open so that water can water can come in the pump itself is connected uh, connected to this this tube here is where when we're up top we'll be doing some of the maintenance of where the uh, main filter is that needs to be the two main filters that need to be cleaned out uh, but we access them from the top there's just a little clamp that's all that holds holds it on with a regular uh, screwdriver that just takes that off <clears throat> For the outflow, same thing. One clamp and it can be uh, accessed with just a screwdriver uh, to, re to remove the clamp. And then it, it's fairly tight. Uh, if you just grip on right here and then pull on the black uh, at the same time, uh, you, you can get it off fairly, uh, fairly easily. So uh, these, these hoses here, uh, last about three to four years uh, every once in a while they do uh, get a hole in them and you need to replace them and yes when they get a hole in them uh, your pool will drain down to that particular level it takes a couple hours to put it back into the the same level that it's at uh, these hoses that we currently have uh, were just replaced last year um, so they should still have a little bit of life uh, left in them uh, you'll see I put a little tarp over top of the pump. This just kind of helps uh, in heavy rainstorms. Sometimes the, the pump would stop because there'd be uh, water that would get near the motor. And so just to prevent that from, uh, from, from happening, just put a little tarp. Make sure that the tarp isn't touching. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. Make sure that the tarp isn't touching the motor, though, because the motor can get hot. And then finally, here is the on and off switch on switch, uh, turning it on, there's no mistake of whether it's on or not, but we'll leave it off because we need it off for uh, accessing and cleaning out the filters. Um, finally, it's connected right now uh, to an extension cord uh, that's buried in some PVC pipe just so it doesn't get strung across, uh, across the yard and just put some electrical tape on it again um, at the beginning of the, of the year so that it does not uh, get any water on it when the rain when the rain comes in that that uh, it wouldn't interfere with uh, the electrical current. Next is the thing that you'll have to do at least once a week, and that's access and clean out the filters. So you can easily remove that cover. There's a hole on top here uh, that also allows water to escape if the water starts to get too high around the pool. And then there's. There's two items in here. There's this uh, basket strainer. 
which catches the big items, like the leaves that you see there. And then <clears throat> down below is a filter with more uh, fine, uh, more of a fine grain filter. And you see that uh, there's some uh, green stuff on it and that, that happens uh, and, and shows that the filter is doing its job. So we're gonna take those two uh, items with them to us to clean those off. All right, so now we're gonna clean these off. All it takes is a garden hose. Uh, having something that has uh, jet spray, uh, so you'll wanna get the most amount of pressure as possible to clean these out. Sometimes the leaves you can just pick out of out of this basket and then and then clean it out. It's not too not too difficult. And then here you can see uh, the parts. This I've already cleaned off with the hose, and this part I haven't. So it comes off um, uh, very easily. It's hard to hold the camera. And, uh, you usually want to hold the hold the filter with your hands as well. But it comes off. It comes off very easily, and you can tell when it's clean and when it's not clean. Now that they're all cleaned off, we can put them back in. The thing to realize is that there's a hole here, and this slips over top of a notch in the uh, container below. And so you'll want to make sure that it's it's uh, pressed all the way down and uh, secure over the top. And you can just do it by uh, feel. Uh, when it's uh, pushed all the way down. So we're just gonna put this back in. <clears throat> It'll float in, usually needs just a little push. Yep, and then it's in place. And then we have the straining basket and that's back in place. Now the next thing that uh, we do is check the levels of the pool. And so you can get um, these aqua check things. The other thing is uh, Royal Pools in Fairfax, which is just a few, about a mile away. Uh, you can take the water samples in and they'll do the test for you. But these test strips are usually uh, pretty or accurate enough as is. So you just take the little strip, dip it in the water, and then match match it up to the guidelines here. And see our chlorine level's a little low. It's been a couple of days since I've put that in. I put in some items for the alkalinity here, and that seems to be on the right track to the okay. And the pH level's just a, a little bit low. So I'll add a little bit of um, uh, pH up substance for that. For the chlorine, I like these uh, big tabs usually put two or three of them in and usually need to do that two to three times a week depending on how if it's sunny or rainy it uses more uh, takes the chlorine out of the pool faster than uh, when it's just overcast and doesn't rain and you can just drop those right into the straining basket and they'll slowly dissolve usually about a day or two it takes uh, for them to dissolve so you always have uh, chlorine release and then you can put the lid back on and then the cover for the deck as well. So you saw that our pH is a little bit low, so I have some of this pH plus. Uh, with these types of chemicals, they say don't pour the chemicals directly into the pool, make sure that it's liquid first. Uh, I believe that can cause uh, staining of the liner. So if you just have a bucket uh, with some water, and there wasn't a, a large problem, so I'll only use about half of it. With all these pH and alkalinity, you can't check it immediately after. You need to wait about three days uh, to do the recheck. And that's why it's important to remember, you just need to be in the, in, in, in the ballpark, make small adjustments as you go um, and check it you know, every three days. And if you keep the small adjustments, then there's not uh, big changes that you need to make. So, uh, poured that into some water, have a stir stick to help make sure that it's liquid, that everything uh, mostly dissolves, and then we'll pour that in uh, when we have the pump running again. All right, we've turned the pump back on so that the water is flowing. 
whenever you're adding chemicals to the pool, you want to make sure that the pump is on and you pour them where the water is running so that it can disperse uh, and not just sink immediately to the, to the bottom of the pool. Uh, the two things that you need to add every week is chlor chlorine always needs to be added. So those big tabs, uh, you can get some liquid chlorine if the lever level's really low. And then uh, algicide. So you can see the pool is really clear now. If it starts to get green, you need more algicide. But just for maintenance, when it's clear like this, it only takes about uh, three ounces per week. And you don't need to do anything too exact, but about three ounces per week of the algicide. <clears throat> if it starts to get green or everything starts to get uh, really low, one of the things that's useful um, or if your kids happen to uh, be in the uh, be in the pool, the shock uh, shock wave um, uh, treatments. These shock treatments are really good. And again, you just you just uh, dump those into where the, where the water is flowing, and it's got high concentration, so it's got the instant chlorine levels and algicides to help do the disinfectant right away. You don't want to swim in the pool immediately after you put these in. Um, I believe the instructions say an hour or something like that, but these these shock treatments work really well to get chemical levels up um, high uh, right away. Uh, one of the last things then is the pool skimmer. This skimmer is really good for getting big items off of the surface of the water. You can also scoop things at the bottom, and then if your kids drop toys and you don't want to get in the water, it works well for that as well. So you can <clears throat> uh, you can use the skimmer for for items on top, and then turn it over and dump it off to the side. <clears throat> the last thing that I'll show you is uh, the vacuum for the for the pool. There's a couple of different items here. You can see. You can see the the deposits near where the ladder is. Those are bigger chunks. Uh, you kind of have two options. You can kick it up with the with the strainer, and if you use the pool a lot, the filter does the work of, of cleaning up the pool. We haven't been using it much because we've been uh, packing to move, but but that'll help keep the pool clean because just things settle on the bottom, and if you're in it, uh, you're kicking it up naturally. So the big items can get, get moved up. Then there's the smaller sandy items. Those, those items are real uh, thin in nature and they pass through the filter of the pool. And so the only way to get those out is to actually use the vacuum, which I'll show you how to use, but you have to detach the hose and spray it out of the pool instead of back into the pool. And I probably do that once every three years or so. It's really, really fine. Uh, grains of sand so it really doesn't bother much when when you're swimming sometimes it actually kind of feels a little nice uh, but just to get it cleaned up uh, every once in a while but those bigger items the filter will uh, filter vacuum will pick up all right this is the vacuum uh, that you can use what it does is this hooks up this end hooks up to the top of your filter so it uses the suction power of your filter to pull things through your filter and that's what gets that's what gets clean so it has an attachment here and you'll notice it works the same way that the basket attachment does here so you can take it off and use use the same pole for both of them to get it attached. So now you've got a big long, uh, uh, a big pole that you can use for the vacuuming. The biggest trick with the, with the vacuum is that you need to make sure that there is water already through this entire length of the, uh, of the hose. And the reason for that is the pump will stop when it hits air and it's not sucking through water anymore. Uh, the pump would get really hot and overheat. 
So it automatically turns off if it has huge gulps of air. That's why it's important to make sure that there's always water in here. And it's a little uh, more art uh, as, as well as science and trying to make sure that there is enough water all the way through the tube. But you want to make sure that there's enough enough water in there. Most of the hose will be in the in the pool when when you're doing this, <clears throat> and it usually works best with two people uh, because sometimes you need to start and stop uh, the pump a number of times, and it can get a little annoying to do it just with one person to try and make that happen. So when you have when you have the level that you think you've got enough. Uh, the water all the way through the hose. Um, I removed I removed this skimmer here and the way that I did that is it just has a couple of notches in here uh, that, it, that uh, it sits in the water like this so you just when it's when it's laid flat you just pull up and that's how you remove it. So this is the skimmer have that removed so that the top of the filter hose can seat directly over top of that filter basket. And in order, you'll, you'll need to push it all the way down to make sure that you have a complete, a complete seal and that the pump is pulling, pulling the water up. At that point, if the, if the pump does not shut off, then you are successful and can just use Use the pole and drag the vacuum around, around the bottom to uh, use, use it as a vacuum. And as soon as you get done cleaning uh, the pool, uh, vacuuming the pool, you'll want to make sure to clean out those filters like we did before uh, because uh, they just got a little bit of a, um, a, a lot of dirt passing through them at once and you want to make sure that that gets cleaned out immediately. That's it for the normal uh, maintenance of the pool. Again, with the vacuuming of the pool, I probably do that two or three times a summer. Uh, not not huge amount of times. And like I said, if you're using the pool a lot, you don't need to do it as much uh, because you're naturally kicking up that dirt and then it goes through the filter because it, uh, the, uh, the pumps, pumps pulling that in already. For yearly maintenance and, and a couple of other things one thing I want to point out is the water level you can see <clears throat> where the water is coming in to the to the pool you want to keep it at there's there's two screws on the left hand side you want to make sure that you want to shoot for enough water so that that second screw is covered and I just the pump is new as of about a year ago and it's pretty powerful, so it takes more water than me. my other one. I used to shoot for the first screw, uh, but this one it'll make a gulping noise um, because it's it's still trying to get more water. So shoot for that sec second second uh, screw uh, second screw from the the um, uh, near the top when you're trying to make sure that the water is filled. From a yearly maintenance, <clears throat> when you're ready to take down the pool, you take the ladder out. All that's holding the ladder up are four screws, one on each one on each side here, and then the ladder comes out. You want to make sure to tip the ladder as it comes out because the ladder steps are filled with water, and then it can just allow the water to drain out into the pool. <clears throat> the other thing that comes off. It just it just screws off is the <clears throat> is where the water jet is coming out there's a cover for it that just unscrews counterclockwise and then when you're draining the pool which I just use a sump pump a small sump pump that can hook up to a garden hose <clears throat> that small sump pump then you can also use it to drain your pool and just uh, putting it out into the yard is fine. It won't kill the grass as long as your your uh, pool levels are are all at reasonable levels. And uh, then you just drain the pool water below um, where where the 
uh, jet stream is, is coming out, you drop it just below that water line. <clears throat> just below here. And then you're good to go to, to, to put on the put on the tarp. Again, with uh, to open up the pool, then you want to drain the water off. Again, I use a sump pump for that to get the, the water off. And it takes more than one person to put on the tarp and take off the tarp every year. Royal Pools will do that for you. Um, there's a couple of other places uh, that'll do it for you if you don't want to deal with the hassle of uh, winterizing and taking it down. Yeah. The first year I had someone else do it. I watched what they did. Uh, and then I've done it every year, every year since. So it's just a personal preference thing. Other than that, those are the, those are the basic pieces. The biggest thing just to remember is, is, um, is, is checking your levels. And like I said, Royal Pools, when you bring in a sample, they'll tell you even how much to put in if you have any questions on that. But keeping the chlorine level, making sure that you always have uh, chlorine tablets in there. And everything is undoable. Uh, the pool has been green at times. It can get ungreen. When you take it off, and, and I had a hole in the tarp at the beginning of this year, so it took about a month uh, to get everything uh, everything to, to, to where it is now, where it's uh, completely clear at the bottom, uh, it, it will eventually work its way out. And it's, uh, like I said, nothing can't be uh, undone as, as far as uh, just putting the right amount of chemicals, uh, chemicals in and, and having some time patience to let the filter do its work. One last thing to mention is that if you get the algicide that's at Menards or Walmart, uh, that algicide will foam up and your entire pool will be full of foam. You say, why is it full of foam? Uh, I get that this algicide at Royal Pools because you need the more expensive algicide so that it doesn't foam up. It's just because the pump that, that we have is, uh, is so powerful and some of the algicides aren't uh, start to foam up went under that much pressure. So that's one other thing I just wanted to mention.